Jeff, and as always, I'm joined by my good friend Paul. Hello, that's me. How are you doing tonight? Yeah, I'm good, thank you, Jeff. Very good indeed, though. A little bit good. jealous. I didn't go to the London Comic Con and meet Jody and everybody else. That's like right. You did. Yeah, I did go to London Comic Con at the weekend. Uh, he hasn't stopped telling me about uh, it. No, I haven't actually. Sounds like you had a really good time. Yeah, dude, it was it was brilliant. Really nice to meet everyone, and and you know from the show and and fans as well. Uh, an enormous amount of love for you know this great. era, the show, mm. the, the whole thing. Um, and uh, I don't think I told you this, Pete. Amazingly, uh, a lady came up to me towards the end of the day, and she said, "Excuse me, are you Jeff from Who Corner to Corner podcast?" <laughs> I could have fallen over where I was standing. I said, yeah, I am. And she said, I recognised you from Twitter. I, I couldn't believe it. And then we had a lovely chat about the podcast and you know, Doctor Who and stuff. So that, that, that was a really nice little uh, moment at the, at the end of the day. So um, as I sort of uh, alluded to there, we're not alone tonight. And we're joined by uh, Pete Levy from uh, Doctor Who. Um, uh, and who was the um, well, one that uh, produced uh, a large chunk of Flux. So um, how are you tonight, Pete? Yeah, I'm very, uh, very well. Thank you, Jeff. Good to meet you both. Good. Thank you for joining us. So Pleasure. we've Thank we've you. got lots of questions um, and we've got questions from um, uh, our followers on uh, Twitter as well. So um, we'll just kind of get straight into things, I think, really. Um, so, Pete, uh, tell us, for anyone who doesn't quite know, can you tell us what being a, a, a producer on the show means as, as a job role? Because it's one of those things where... You know, sometimes people ask me as well, what, what is a producer? You know, it's sort of... What do they do? Yeah. What is a producer? <laughs> Can you narrow it down? <laughs> well, what, what do they do all day? Yeah. What do they do all day? Surely <laughs> there must be something. <laughs> it's it's strange, isn't it? I, it's the first question that I normally get asked. Yeah, uh, is it? Uh, we, we do try to be original on this show. Uh, no, 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 you are already. Um, it is it is one of those jobs where... A director directs, a cameraman operates the camera, a sound man listens. Uh, it, it, I suppose that the best way in theory is a producer is the person that takes the story, takes the writer and the showrunner's vision and puts that onto the screen and collaborates with all the heads of departments uh, and, and shares that vision and makes sure we mm. stay on track as far as schedule and as far as budgets and all of that sort of all of that house housekeeping stuff uh, and a producer reports directly to the series producer in the, the case of Doctor Who that was the amazing immaculate Nicky Wilson uh, yeah. and um, and Matt Strevens who was our exec producer uh, and Tra uh, Tracy Simpson and then ultimately to Chris Chris Chibnall, who was our showrunner mm. so so I report into them uh, and and then I collaborate with the director the dop and all the various heads of heads of um heads of department so um it's it's not a small and unimportant role is it then? <laughs> <laughs> no it it does have a lot of responsibility yeah. but, but i do remember i do remember i mean obviously yeah. I, I mean i was the visual effects producer on 11 and 12 yeah. um, mm. and i remember we had a we had a really good session one day. Chris, Matt, Nikki came into Deneg, uh, uh, the, the company that, that, I, that, that I was working with at the time. Yeah. And we had a really brilliant session. I can't remember what the episode yeah. was we were reviewing. But as we walked out, you know, Chris and I were both, you know, we're, we're like kids in a sweet shop. You know, once we're seeing, <laughs> we're seeing working process of, I think it might have been the Skithra. Uh, and yep. um, and that chase sequence. Oh yeah, with yes, the scorpion, big scorpion the aliens coming yeah. out everywhere. Yeah, yeah. That. A absolutely, absolutely brilliant. Working with a fantastic mm. uh, visual effects supervisor, Sheila Wickens, on twelve and on th on eleven with with Mike Bell. Um, and, I, and as we got to the door, Chris Chris made a lovely comment, and I said, "Do you know what, Chris? I can't believe I actually get paid for doing <laughs> this job." And Chris just looked at me and, without missing a beat, went, "Yeah." I haven't been able to work out how they still get to pay you. <laughs> <Brilliant. laughs> oh, that's Brilliant. fabulous. I mean, do, doing something that you enjoy to that level, even to, to wondering, why do they pay me this stuff? It's, it's almost there. Uh, <laughs> I mean, is, is it kind of the, is it, what would you say being a producer is a sort of role that you aimed to, you know, to follow as a career or did you just kind of land it? Did it follow you? 
how, how did it sort of happen? It's bizarre, isn't it? I mean, I, I think I, I've, I haven't got a linear career path. Mm. I, I sort of looked at opportunities and taken opportunities, try something. If I don't like it or I don't think I'm good enough at it, then I'll drop it and, and do something else. So it's a bit of a sort of slow meandering river. And I think yeah. I, I'm, I started my television career at Breakfast Television at 2 a.m. Yeah, I was going to ask about that because you po you tweeted, didn't you? The the uh, yeah. uh, I watched the other day, and um, I I sort of you know I looked you up and everything, and you know saw you yeah, you. like you said, kind of okay, uh, stalk stalk, I stalked you, yeah. <laughs> but like you said, your your career path has been really interesting, actually. The the way you've kind of moved through things and in the from illustration yeah. and effects and yeah, uh, but but also I think it's about just for, you know we all learn and develop mm. as, as human beings, and I think as you know as you as you develop, as you find new interests, I mean, technology has changed enormously mm. since I started in the business. Then you can you can follow these little these little paths. Uh, I, and I got promoted to a uh, graphic supervisor at, at Breakfast Television, mm. and our old boss, God rest him, a lovely fellow, Bruce Gingell, who was a bit of a godfather of British television. He said to me, he said, well, of, well, of course, you know why you're promoted. And I thought, oh, here we go. This is going to be embarrassing. It's my creative flair. It's my business. Um, it, apparently it was because I was the oldest and I shouted louder than anyone else. <laughs> how? Key skills. Yeah. How, how much more am I getting paid? Um, yeah. but, but I think that was as a result of a lot of the skills I'd learned in the forces. I mean, obviously yeah. I joined the army straight from school. So yeah. it was a lot of the skills that I learned from there. So I think all of us, you know, we've all got different skills and yeah. Uh, and, and you know things that we pick up and it's just finding out where you can best place those and for me the role of a producer it best fits where i'm at now and and a mm. lot of the experiences that that i've got having said that um, you know to be a producer you've got to have a good team around you and it is a big job and it is a huge responsibility certainly on a show like who but we're really blessed with having people like nikki matt uh, Tracy and Chris who just really support us and they're our mm. friends and they look after us and the one thing about Doctor Who is for the whole three years that I've worked on the show if anything ever happens something goes wrong or there's a glitch or whatever there's never a case of okay that was your fault or whose mm. fault was mm. it something's happened let's put it right, right yeah. so, on, you, you know? you're all in it together it's yeah, yeah, not, a, not a blame game yeah 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 so um well, my next question was what's it like uh what, what was it like working on on doctor who flux as as a whole project and you've sort of um you know mentioned it a bit there and you know the other people that we've spoken to like like ray and bav talked about that the family uh feel to everything yeah, and, and, and you've yeah. sort of kind of reiterated that as well pete so yeah what what was it like working with everyone and and you know just doing a, a project of of that scale um, I mean, it was, you know, I mean, I've described it as, you know, that very similar mm. to that moment on Christmas morning when you run down the stairs and you run into your front room, uh, you, you know, having <laughs> for so long, but your front room's not your front room, it's the TARDIS and it's not your brothers and sisters, it's Jodie and Mandy, yeah. and, you know, and, and as uh, who, as Salim, who was our yep. director on, on my, uh, on our episodes, um, it, it is... I think that sense of responsibility is always there, but having worked at a, one step removed in post-production yeah. as visual mm. effects producer on series 11 and 12, I knew the crew. I've been a fan of who since when, you know, way back, way back when, um, I, I knew the location, uh, I knew everything about it. So that wasn't such a big thing joining the yeah. team as, as a producer. The big thing was COVID. Mm. yeah i was gonna ask yeah that must yeah. have been a big stress on the production yeah it it really was and but thankfully for us i mean the mm. bbc is a you know it's a well well maintained organization with lots of brilliant people in it yeah. you know yeah. jackie who's you know was was my point of contact for for health and safety she'd been working with other series like Call the Midwife and Silent Witness and I have to say a massive thanks to their production teams because it was a case of me picking up the telephone uh, obviously I joined the uh, series 13 as as COVID manager for the, yes. first, for the first episode the Halloween apocalypse, um, yeah. yeah because I, I I mean I still had a bit of time to prepare for episode three so yeah. it gave you know 
it gave me an opportunity to to help formulate that that the protocols yeah. around how we get back on 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 set um but again you know I, I, I know it's a cliche but but it's genuine it's that whole family thing you know you want to keep your family safe but mm, you yeah. want to see them you know that that first morning back on set when we haven't seen each other for for eons everyone just wants to hug and how are you yeah, and how have you been yeah. and, but, but of course we can't because everyone's a little bit nervous mm. the important thing was that not that everyone was safe mm. it, everyone felt safe yeah you know because we've all got you know younger members of the of the team they've got their grandparents there's you know members of the team have got their kids they've got young yeah. kids you know they've got uh, pregnant relatives and all of this sort of stuff going on and you know vulnerable relatives and all this sort of stuff so it was it was like with everyone you know but having said that i am aware of the fact that we're working in a television studio mm. and we're not you know we're not digging holes in the road we're not working front line we're not doing any of that stuff so uh, so with all of that said we do put what we do into perspective mm. But at that moment, it, you know, it was a big thing. So that was that was our biggest, I think, the biggest issue for us was COVID. Yeah. I, so with my work, which is, uh, you know, on a different scale, when I was going out to film and having to deal with with COVID, you know, and like so doing an interview with two people, for example, you've got to think, well, I need to keep two meters between them. How do I make this shot look good with an enormous gap between them? And so that was, you know, challenging enough. But. You know what, what must it have been like for for you guys working on the show and, hmm. and anyone working on you know tv or film trying to deal with all of that and like f for you pete trying to put protocols in place in a in a situation that you know was probably being was changing by the day and by the hour i guess i you think know. it was in those early days wasn't yeah. it yeah absolutely I, I, and i think the thing is is you know credit to uh, our exact team credit mm. to chris you know i think i mean i wasn't you know, sat next to Chris in those very early days when, when he decided that, you know, what he had to write or what he wanted to write and the stories that, that he wanted to tell. But I think from a production point of view, the fact that there was no overseas travel in, in this yeah, series, yeah, yeah. because it wasn't possible. Uh, we, you know, we had to, uh, to try and look at a scenario whereby guests, guest cast, mm we could use them for longer periods of time uh, for locations and sets we could use uh, for more for more episodes and as always you know Chris and Nikki and Matt took that as a challenge and an, uh, and all part of the adventure you know that we could that, that we could go on but from a practical point of view you know when you when you've got an art a brilliant art department as we had you know building sets you've got to think okay I need I need carpenters, I need plasterers, I need mm. painters, and I need all of this. Okay, so I'll get those guys in first, and then we'll get that team in, yeah. and they leave, and then we've got to, you know, we've got to. I think we ha we ended up with a set of protocols that were that were right that were right for us. We're yeah, just yeah. Team, you know setting up uh, as a lot of productions are. So this is this wasn't special to us at the time was you know, setting up vid video villages outside of the set so right. that not everyone needed to be inside. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. And then um, um, you, you did a, a, a COVID test shoot, didn't you? Which was that at the end of, well, it was before Series 13. That's when Tosin came back, wasn't it, for, for a day? Yeah, I wasn't involved with that right, one, okay. yeah, to be honest. But yeah, that was kind of to see if it was all, all workable. Because I, I guess at, at one point, you know, it was well i'm sure if anything was going to film at all wasn't it yeah i think that was always in the back of our mind but everyone was so i mean uh, obviously everyone's desperate to be safe uh, mm. and uh, to keep, you know to keep each other safe but we want to get back to work you know we yeah. want to get back yeah. to some form of normality that was that was human nature and uh, uh, and i know that you would have spoken to the lovely ray uh, yeah. you know and his department you know they had to think about getting material in and 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 costume fittings and you know and, and yeah, yeah. that you know sterile and all i mean it's and the makeup the, the prosthetics team and the you know it's just it's phenomenal something that the whole input yeah yeah something that you just is uh you know you do every day like the makeup or something suddenly becomes immensely 
challenging, doesn't it, mm-hmm. for different reasons? And you know, same with the costumes and stuff. You know, Ray, Ray talked a bit about that. So um, I'm kind of jumping a- ahead a little bit here, but did um, and I'll and I'll come back round. But did did the plans for the series? change you know when when covid hit and everything and and you know to turn it into you know the the massive serial did was that always the plan for series 13 or because my my uh, sorry my, my understanding was that um you know plans were in place and scripts were being written and then things had to change and i wondered whether you know things like um you know war of the sontarans was a an episode that was kind of uh, you know adapted to fit into flux and things so that, yeah, I kind of wondered what the what the plan was. Yeah, I mean, I think that I mean, I wasn't I, I wasn't right there at that at, pre, at that level of pre-production mm. stage. So I so I mm. wouldn't be able to say for sure. If I had to take an educated guess, Chris would have started prepping w- way before COVID. Yeah, yeah. Rock. You know, we would have looked at you know, can we get you know, can we get an overseas shoe? And Chris loves telling stories mm. and, and breaking them down. So you've got. You know, so you've got one of the, and that's the beauty of Doctor Who. You know, you've got, you know, you've got a time travel mystery, then you've got a historical, then you've got a yeah. kitchen sink, and then you've got something else. And I should imagine, and my, as I say, my, my sort of educated guess is that he would have had to have changed those in uh, yeah. the early yeah. days. Mm-hmm. But with regards to changing them once we got into pre production, I, I think that it, it would have, very minimal changes yeah. because I think he, you know, the, the exact team was smart enough to know what they, what they could do and what they couldn't do. And of course, you know, the Welsh government gave, gave mm. the television film industry, you, you know, exemption to, to get back to work and to yeah. get out. It's a big, it's a big boost to the economy. It's a, it's a good employer. Uh, and obviously we need escapism. You know, we needed escapism then more than any other time. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we were aware of the fact if you're going outside a location, you know, there are members of the public that can't go back to work, mm-hmm. you know, that are watching us. So we've got to, we must stick to those protocols. Mm-hmm. We've got to be respectful and mindful. You know, if we're out on location that people are watching mm-hmm. us, we've got to set, it's an opportunity for us as a production to set a good example. And I think, you know, we, I think we managed that. Okay. Yeah, I, th- I think so. Yeah. No, no one got sick as far as I was aware. So, you know, things, things worked. Yeah. Um, Paul, have you got any questions at that point? I, I do actually, it's kind of, um, breaking away a bit i'm, I'm quite interested that you so you see so i think you alluded it to, to it earlier pete that you were part of the dneg team originally is that right yeah i uh, i mean I, I i joined dneg good grief five years ago possibly yeah. um i joined to as vfx producer on an episode mm. of black mirror <gasps> oh okay yeah, yeah. Well, the poster behind you is that is Black the uh, metalhead. Yes. That, did you um, did you draw that? No, I wish okay. I did. But but one of our animators found that it was a really talented illustrator, mm. uh, and, and we asked him if he would if if he would uh, would would run a bash off, and it's signed by it's signed by my whole VFX team. Brilliant. Uh, Brilliant. We, we, I mean, it was just I intended to go, I intended to join DNEG for a year. Uh, thankfully. Yeah, yeah. They, they kept me on. I think <laughs> the team won, uh, it was the Metalhead episode with the with the robotic dog. Uh, and as you can imagine, working with Annabelle and Charlie Brooker was just <laughs> peeking inside those brains. It's just yeah, that's a scary awesome. place in some ways. <laughs> Sometimes a, bit, a little bit scary, um, but but really collaborative. And, yeah, and, and you know, and, and for me, Dine, so I was, you know, our BAFTA was for was the first mm. the television department at one for for our, our episode of Black Mirror. But I'm working with artists, uh, VFX supervisors, animators, match movers yeah. that have done Baby Driver, that have done all the Marvel, that have done yeah. Batman, that have done you know, all the Harry Potters. I mean, it's for me working in VFX. It's like having it's like having Ronaldo and Mo Salah and all of these sort of guys all <laughs> play, play for Yeovil Town Football Club. <laughs> Every, everyone at the top of their game reaching for the stars. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So what does being a visual effects supervisor in, involve? Is it 
sort of similar to being you know the show producer in the kind of day to day but obviously working in post and with effects no it's completely different okay. uh, mm. so uh so a visual effects producer is more about looking after the finances and the schedule the create and and obviously as a producer my link will be with the production team uh making sure that we manage expectations we deliver yeah, on time yeah. we get you know we get we get um, back plates and all of that sort of stuff the visual effects supervisor that's the creative lead so as i say on series 11 it was the, the fabulous mike bell and in uh, series 12 it was the it was the superb sheila wickin so i mean they, they they've both worked on on some of the you know some of the biggest movies and tv shows uh, of our of our time um they're the creative leads mm. and then and then with them you've got a head of animation, a head of model build, a head of texture. So Sheila and Mike's job will be, what shots do we need to produce? Yeah. Let, and they oversee all of those departments. So for something like the Pating, for example, mm -hmm. uh, which was one of our first ones, was one it? of our first creatures, um, Mike- oh, He's look, great. It, I mean, it was just- love the Pating. Yeah. 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 It's so brilliant. full of character, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I showed my kids that bit, and they were sort of re repulsed by it, but also really yeah. liked it. You know, when it eats the, the Sonic and burps, and you know, it's got the rose of teeth. And, you know. But that was it. It was about getting the, that humour yeah. across as well. But I mean, yeah. each and every one of the every single one of those shots, we would have been yeah. in, in a viewing suite and watched those fifty times or more because oh, both Sheila and Mike are perfectionists, and, mm. if, and we're watching it on a you know on a big big mm. screen. So we've got to make sure. They've got to make sure every single element is right. Yeah. 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 Fa uh, favorite for Ting shot when it comes out of the airlock and it's just taking the explosion. Yeah, and it's, it's so got a happy face on, yeah. just floating in space. Yeah. It's got a happy face. Yeah. yeah cool. Absolutely. Yeah, that's <laughs> one. That was one of our favourites as well. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, so I was going to ask, what was your favourite visual effect th that you did on the show, and what's one effect that um, people wouldn't know was an effect? Because I'm, I'm oh, quite he's interested. A couple of questions in there. Did you see that? Quite interested. In that. You've got to watch out for this. Um, <laughs> and I love being surprised and not realising something was an effect. Wow, I, I, I mean, I there are lots of there are lots of brilliant shots that I that I genuinely loved, and it's little tiny things. Mm. There was the shot, and forgive me, I can't remember which episode it was, but there was an episode where the Dalek comes down through, crashes through the roof of the building. Yeah, uh, that's resolution, isn't it? Is it? That one. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, it is resolution, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. absolutely, and and you can see where, where, mm. where the light is coming from its stalk. You can see the dust motes coming coming through that. I, I mean, yes, it's that attention to detail. Yeah, I yeah. love the I love the sh the battle. I live in Bristol, and this that's my home. So I loved it that we managed to have our Dalek battle on Clifton Suspension Bridge. Yeah, yeah, that was good. Yeah, yeah. Was, yeah. So yeah. Cool. There, was, there was some photos of that, wasn't there? Before way way before the episode came out. Yeah. And, those little things kind of help to get a bit of a buzz going, don't they, in between yeah. the yeah. breaks of the series and and then yeah. that sort of thing. I mean, it's um, so is your um, I mean, is, is your background, would you say, creative or more technical or some mixture of the, of the, of the oh, two? Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not technical at all. Um, mm. uh, I, I've sort of I've had to move with the times. So I felt that at my age, I've sort of crossed over, you know, from using, <laughs> from using uh, bits of bits of wood and, and, yeah, and, yeah. and blast wood to <laughs> technology. I mean, I used to, you know, as a graphics operator at TVAM, I was creating mm. uh, Ulrika Johnson's web weather maps on a Contel paint box that you could have bought for oh, £70,000. Nice. And, and now I'll, you, the phone will probably do it better, yeah. won't it? Yeah. <laughs> There'll probably be an app for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there is an app for it. I mean, I, I, did, uh, I, I did all of the animation for the last series of, yeah. Channel Four Scrap Heap Challenge on a, on a piece of software that I bought for ninety pounds. Yeah, you know mm -hmm. uh, it's yeah. it's it's changed so much. I mean, I so so as a producer within visual effects, yeah, I'll, I make no bones about this. Mm. There is an element of frustration because you're watching brilliantly creative people being creative. Yeah. Yeah. You're having some creative input, so 
so my i suppose the payoff for me i've always painted and illustrated and that's been mm. you know that's helped pay the mortgage mm. uh, but, but that's my sideline as it were because that just fulfills my creative juices yeah yeah uh, so then so becoming a producer it it it's a completely different game mm. and you are a, you are a lot more creative so i'm painting less but but maybe the creativity because i, I think the, the way that i'm understanding as a producer is kind of a manager you know you're managing lots of aspects of uh, production you're managing a lot of people you're managing buzz, budgets you're managing resources you're, ma you're managing just the kind of to and fro the flow of, of, of every day on the studio and beyond it and perhaps maybe perhaps the creativity is in is in solving the challenges that arise from mm. those things. So although you're not directly painting and drawing and stuff, you're you're being creative in your solution provision. Does that make sense? Is, or would that be accurate? No, yeah, that does make that does make sense actually, Paul. And I think the thing is is it's like everything because you sur you know surround yourself with people that are brilliant mm. at their job. So so on a production of that size, you know, you'll have production manager, line producer, your first, second, and third assistant directors. Uh, so they're they're helping you to take care of that. They're they're doing their jobs. Um, so it is a case of you you know working with the director and the DOP uh, because I've sat in a number of meetings, a number of script yeah. meetings. I've had conversations with Nikki, Matt, and Chris. I know what Chris, hopefully, what Chris has got for that you know in his imagination for these shots. So it's just to make sure that the that the director has a has a similar vision and a similar mm, mm. view i mean i was genuinely genuinely impressed with as when when i was working with him he's he's an an absolute darling he's a he's a brilliant he's a brilliant director he's brilliant with people and that's the important thing it's being able and i think this is part of a producer yeah, yeah. it's just once you put that team together it's working with that team and mm. allowing them and allowing them to do their job properly and, and allowing them to take credit for doing their job properly as well. And as was brilliant, I have to say, and we had a, we had a brilliant DOB called um, a DOP called Phil Wood, yeah. uh, who, who, you know, who's who's gone on to do some amazing stuff and 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 and, and beforehand. So it, you know, we've all got our own different roles. But I think yeah, what was yeah. really nice is just collaborating. Going, yeah. What mm. do you think of that shot? And do, do you think we could do it slightly differently? But but. But that, I think what goes to the behind all that is we're all fans of the show. Yeah, you yeah, all want the yeah. best for it. Yeah. I, I must say that um, <clears throat> the last three series of the show, I don't think it's ever looked better. And, it's been uh, fantastic. Yeah, and, yeah. and Flux oh, was beyond epic in, in every <laughs> it way. It really was. And, and, you know, we've talked, Paul and I, with, with people on Twitter about this, mm. but pulling that off, you know, in COVID and with all those restrictions and... and you know, it just looked absolutely <laughs> phenomenal, and uh, oh, you know the cinematography, and you know the the effects and the standard of them, like the the opening scene on um, you know Halloween Apocalypse, where where Jodie and Mandip are you know hanging upside down and stuff. Just I, I showed my son that bit, and uh, you know he th he thought it was brilliant. Oh, can mm. I watch the rest of it? I was a bit late. You've got to go to bed now. But, you know, <laughs> it, it was proper. You was, know, that, was that him or you, Jeff? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but you know, full. You know, it, it absolutely competes with what Netflix and you know Disney Plus are doing, and oh, yeah. you know all, all of that kind of thing. I, I just, yeah. It, oh, that's it, really that's good to know. I, and and also on on a, on not necessarily a fraction, but but you know not such the big budgets. But I yeah, I would, yeah Ray talked uh, about that. Yeah. Did, yeah, you know we've got Dave Bannister, uh, mm. we've got Dave Zaretti, we, we, you know we've got we, we've got Andrew Robertson, we've got a massive DNEC team mm. uh, who are leading those departments, who you know who are with us supervising those those shots. So so that so that opening you know not only have you got the fabulous uh you know performances from 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 the cast but you've yeah. got the stunt coordinators mm. you've got the whole production crew you've got the dean egg team as well it's brilliant i mean yeah. to see that develop it, it's a joy and you know watching shows like mandalorian and, and all of those yeah. and, and see my some of my old colleagues names <laughs> sort of pop on those it's going yeah but do, do you pause the credits so you can see them in there yeah. 
So, oh, so absolutely, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Big time. Just like a, a WhatsApp co conversation with them, you know, like how, yeah. how did you achieve that shot? And yeah. I bet, how much did that cost? You know, and, <laughs> and... <laughs> we could use that. We could do that. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, that, that's something, isn't it? Because there, there's that shot in um, War of the Suntarans again, when you've got the two armies coming across the battlefield and you've got all the little individual kind of elements, you know, mm. that sort of crowd. Techno I, I don't know what it's called. I, the, you know, the crowd technology, technological <laughs> things where they, they have it's, random it's cloning, elements in the it, crowd. Is you know. yeah. <laughs> that what it is? Yeah, Jeff, <laughs> Jeff knows his stuff. But it looks it looks fabulous. And, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, we're looking at it from the point of view of the perspective of very grizzled adults, at least I am anyway. But yeah, when I was like, like Jeff with his son, Ethan, you know, the kids, they don't see any difference between what they see on Doctor Who now mm -hmm. and what they see on, on uh, you know, in the cinemas and everything else. And to be honest, actually, even as adults, we don't. So in no, our no. heads, it's all just fabulous stuff. And, it, and, and it's filling the world with, with dreams almost, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, talking about the kids there, it, you know, I, I, you may have wondered this as well, guys, but, you know, my kids watch stuff and I think, I, I wonder if, do they think the Pating is real or the Hulk? Whoa, whoa, whoa. You know what? <laughs> what? what? <laughs> Pete just said the Pating was his mate. <laughs> Unbelievable! But you know they they don't, they don't know that it's they don't know anything about CGI, do they? And you know they they take it all it, in, don't they? Yeah, it's, it's and it looks so believable and so real. Um, mm. and, and sometimes you know my son will say, you know, uh, is is that you know is, is that real or you know? So yeah, f of course, but you know he, they they don't know and and the, the stuff is so believable and so good that they're they're absolutely you know pricked by it which is which is yeah. the point of it yeah so Pete, you produced uh specifically on once upon time survivors of the flux and the vanquishers didn't you so yeah what um those are particularly once upon time is uh just a bonkers brilliant episode and and um so much great you know character stuff in it and visuals the the, the bit with um the the giant um maury where where jody's hanging there it, it sort of um it reminded me like something you see with the watcher in old marvel comics you know yeah. where he's, he's massive you know um but from across those three episodes what what was your most let's go with what's your most memorable moment on each and what was the biggest challenge on each Ooh. wow so I've, I've gone off script there with with the challenge question. <laughs> <laughs> that was improvised, was it? Yeah, <laughs> I was thrown out one in. <laughs> so, in uh, mind. <laughs> okay, so uh, once upon time, yeah. I'd say that the, that the challenge was getting started. Was was you know for as Phil and myself, it was getting to know the team, them getting to know us, and working. Uh, there are loads of brilliant shots that I'm really, I'm really proud of mm. in that I would have to say working with, I mean, it's a given that our, that our cast are fabulous anyway, you know, <laughs> it, you know, I mean, I think if you just look at the Twitter feeds yeah. of, of, you know, how, how engaged they were at Comic Con mm. and, you know, and, and that sort of thing, that's, I mean, that's not made up. That's what they're like. Yeah. Pe you people, know. you know, they love the, the cast, you know, yeah. the, uh, I sort of mentioned it earlier, the, the enthusiasm and the passion and, yeah. you know, having, having not been in a room, mm. uh, you know, with other fans like, like that for so long, it, you know, when I went to like MCM Comic Con in London a couple of years ago, it was just a series 11 was just about to launch or yeah. just started maybe. So there was a few 13 cosplays and, and things, but, you know, we, we hadn't really kind of gotten into it yet. Mm. So now you know, all these years down the line, uh, just where well, you might have seen that they, they did a great big cosplay meet where Jodie yes, Funko right. bombed them and, and just hundreds of them, you know, in, in costume. I was quite jealous. I thought I could probably rock that coat as well, you know, <laughs> but it, it was just brilliant. And, and you know, people in, in tears of joy after meeting, yeah. you know, the, the girls and, you know, I managed to hold it together. But, you know, <laughs> uh, it, yeah, uh, I think, um, you know, you, you can go online and, and you know, wonder whether it's uh, – a true representation of things but but having you know been there uh, you know the the love for it is is real and, yeah and, absolutely yeah. oh no without a shadow out it is but i think what i think what was a real bonus mm. for, uh, for, uh, for for us was our guest cast so so with uh once upon time i mean i've always been a massive fan of craig parkinson anyway you know the, the 
the, the, the man's a brilliant actor. Yeah, but yeah. there was this scene in um, when he's doing a deal with, uh, you know, when he first, when we first see him, uh, he's running through his, his lines and uh, Mandip is stood to one side. She's yeah. in that scene. Uh, lovely Jacob as Vinda is in that scene as well. And I can't, uh, forgive me, I can't remember the exact, the exact script, but it was, oh no, I, un I understand. And Craig's facing away from him. Yeah. And he doesn't say anything for, for, you know, for a couple of weeks. <laughs> oh, you understand, do you? And then he slowly turns around to face him. And we, he let, we let the scene play out. And then one of the old, one of the old hands, even yeah. older than me, looked up and went, oh, he's good. <laughs> and it, was, it was that moment where we were holding our breath because that, yeah. that malevolence was so palpable yeah. with, with with Craig and, mm -hmm. and he carried it throughout, I think throughout the whole, mm -hmm. the, the whole tenure of, of the Grand Serpent. But so that was, yes, yeah, so that was my, that was my favorite bit. Survivors of the Flux, Kevin McNally. Uh, you oh, know, well, yes. yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that- Eustasis that... Jericho. Yeah. Yes, what a, oh, what a I wish we'd seen more of him, even you know, in those know. What, three, ep two episodes, three episodes ish that he's in. Yeah. Yeah. He's brilliant, and that character has so much, so many stories to be told. I'm sure Big Finish will, will take that one mm. on, but yeah, brilliant. Oh, I, 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 I hope so. And I think, for, I think, for, you know, uh, so the other big name that we had mm. was Barbara Flynn, yeah, yes, yeah, oh, it was it just. Too an absolute dream and, and so lovely. Mm. And, and I think, you know, when, when you've got actors of that standing, you know, who can, who can uh, interact with Jodie in yeah. exactly the same way as she's interacting with the guy who's looking after the fleet of cars or one of the runners mm. and know their names, mm. uh, but to see, but to see, Barbara and Jody acting the scenes of "Don't you recognise me?" Yeah, mm. oh. I, I talked um, at, at length scenes, with a with a chap at Comic Con about that, and um, he he said uh, the Jody says uh, you know was was the master lying to me, and and Tectoon just pauses before she says you know no, and he said that that moment you know he just he was amazed by how powerful it was yeah. and and that that whole scene you know and and brilliant brilliant really scene. really good yeah i mean so, yeah. So, so much going on as well you know so the, the the way the way tattoo just assumes the child was 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 there abandoned when mm. as, as the doctor points out you know she could have been waiting for something yeah. yeah you know the, the, they didn't necessarily come from the wormhole the, the wormhole could have taken the parents or you yeah. know suddenly those possibilities and the fact that she doesn't care. Texium just yeah. does not care. There's no empathy in the face. The way those two are playing it, that scene is absolutely electrifying. And there must be, I think as you're alluding to, Pete, a lot of trust in yeah. the actors mm. and knowing and, and you know, understanding that the director gets it, that the sound guys, the lighting, everybody's getting at this moment now and letting the actors breathe and do what they do in that space. Yeah. But I think what's also interesting is the fact that you've got actors of that standing. Mm. But watch their face when they walk onto the TARDIS. <laughs> you, you know, Can't show, they hold it then? That's when they it all may collapses. have watched with grand, grandkids or kids yeah. or, you know, whatever. So that seasoned professional becomes another fan. Yeah. Like, just like we are. But, but also I think it's the, you know, a, a, a massive, uh, massive uh, respect for, um, mm. Craig Ailes, who was uh, covering. Oh, oh my God, he's so good. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's he's amazing, and and also to Sam Sprawl and Rashenda. Yeah, uh, you know, for for, for yeah. their roles. Yeah. I, I just I was going to say, let's talk about uh, Swarm f for a minute because both of them were incredible in in That's every aspect. The the suit, the the pointy shoulder, yeah, yeah the movement, the, the, the yeah. crystals. And last week, Pete, I was filming a show, a theatre show. And we and we got there when we started to set up and things. We were doing a live edit on it, and I can't remember how it happened, but I suddenly discovered that Sam Sproul was the lead, 
and I, and I said to the guys, also, oh my god, oh my god, you, you, <laughs> you, you don't know who that is, and they they don't watch Doctor Who. I, I don't know why I hire these guys to be honest. <laughs> but, uh, I, I showed them a picture, and uh, I said, I, I, I'm going to have to go and tell him how great he was. And then um, they did the matinee show, and and then we came back to set up for the evening, and they were getting ready, they were warming up. I said, Sam, I said, I'm really sorry to interrupt, but I, I just want to tell you that you were awesome and then we had a chat about that and our kids and the show and you know various other things for a few minutes and, and he was wonderful and the, and the show was really good but yeah him and and Vashinda were just just amazing so yeah. kind of you know sort of camp at, at one part yeah. but, but horribly menacing. evil and yeah. menacing and you know yeah. the, the design they they were really the best villains in a long time I think on the show uh just superb yeah, and also I think um, a lot of the credit goes to you know Ray with the and his team, you mm -hmm. know, with the costumes and Danny Marie and the prosthetics team because obviously that I mean you know Sam and Rishenda, you know were in the seat you know they were in before all of us they left after all of us yeah and they had to act as well yeah you know and and sometimes you know we were outside in hot conditions but it's like you put that coat on. And all of a sudden, your movement, and you can see mm. some, I mean, you know, actors of their class, they get it straight away. Mm. And it's like it becomes part of them. Now, I thought, yeah. they, I thought they were brilliant. But I have to say, I think we had a couple of new, newish stars. Mm. So Thaddea, Thaddea Graham, who joined us as Belle, mm. uh, you know, Jacob yeah. as, as, as Vinda, they were, they were absolutely brilliant. Yeah. And it's almost like the newer stars and the older mm. stars we're all just or you know it's all just a level playing field and you I, see people sort of feeding off of each other yeah I, I think um something that shows how uh successful they all were is that people want more you know yeah. like Paul said want, wants more of Jericho mm. and you know people want to see more, more of Bell. Bell's got her own fan yeah. community now on Twitter yeah. actually yeah, nice. yeah. And, Such and just a strong characters so well played yeah just, and just Absolutely. just really likable yeah, yeah. You know, as, as well and and uh yeah they, they were just just brilliant in it so um wh what uh what inspired you well you talked a bit about your career path people but kind of what what led you to wanting to get into tv so you were in the in the army and and you know in in your early years and so you know where, how did the tv work come about it's just one of those cases of being in the right place at the right time right you know i think uh, because you know I, I'd always sort of drawn and painted and it's telling a story in one frame and also being a massive TV nerd as well. You, yeah. you know, I, mean, uh, you, you know I, 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 love, I love that reading, you know, reading those stories as well. So, so I'm reading a story. It could be an MR Carey, you know, a Felix Castor uh, book book. And as I'm reading it, I'm seeing it, it as mm. we all do in my own imagination. Mm. Um, so being in the right place at the right time, breakfast television, uh, I had Bernie Gordon, you know, we had Sir David Frost was one of our, was one of our directors, as, as I mentioned, Bruce Gingell. So using my illustration ability into the graphics department, um, and then, and then, and then following that line to animation, visual effects, producer, and, and coming in, coming in that way. And as you see, I've got the perfect face for for radio so there was no yeah, way like us yeah someone said on twitter the other day do you think you might do a, a video version of the podcast and uh we were like yeah i'm not sure if anyone really wants to see we'll blank blank us out and you know no, leave, oh I come guess, on i think you're like... doing yourself a disservice now <laughs> <laughs> i'll have to put some clothes on <laughs> yeah, yeah you did say that i think didn't you yeah because <laughs> yeah, it's the only joke i know jeff i'm gonna i'm, I'm it, glad but... someone else knows the uh the, the face for radio thing i remember seeing this um little cartoon comic thing somewhere years and years ago and and the uh the radio DJ was signing this picture of, you know, like, you know, Brad Pitt look like, and then of his actual face, you know, he looked completely different. You know? <laughs> that always stuck in my head. So Pete, have you, what advice would you give for people who want to get into producing and into TV production in general? Because you know, like you said, you know, it was the right place at the right time for you. And, you know, everyone I speak to has almost a, a, a different route in and, yeah. and, you know, like I did a film of degree and, and things, but, you know kind of got got 
where I am with things kind of through people I met and, you know, being asked to do things and it just kind of grew from there. And like, like I said, it's, it's a different sort of, uh, you know, league to, to what you guys work on, but you know, what, what, yeah, what advice would you give people? I think, I think first of all, appreciate the time you're living in at the moment, because, mm. you know, I, I'm, I'm of an age whereby, you know, when I was 16, I'm one of five, you know, grew up on a cancer estate in Somerset and one of five, it's no disrespect to, to, to my background at all. Mm. But, but the reality is, is you, you pay your way or you move out once you've left school. Further education wasn't anything that was on offer. You know, that's yeah. for posh pe- that was for posh people, university and college. So, mm. so I think nowadays there are so many good routes in. So mm. university, so there's some fabulous degrees with some really good tutors that I've, that I've spoken to that mm. I know. Um, at colleges, there's some, there's some good opportunities. There's organization, uh, organizations like the Next Gen Skills Academy that, that help. It's all about the talent. It's finding the mm. talent. Mm. Um, and I know that, you know, companies like DNEG and Framestore and MPC and all of these, they collaborate, they go around to schools, they go around to universities, they've got their own schemes running. Certainly that's with regards to visual effects. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I have to say, I think, you know, a lot of the in, indie production companies and certainly the BBC, they're following that same school of thought. H- how do we get our hands on the talent before anyone mm-hmm. else, before anyone else does? Yeah. So I would say, understand your, understand the art that you're working in. So watch television. What you know? Watch what 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 the what the trends are. Understand how to tell a good story. I mean, we've got the the you know the marvelous Ardman animation uh, here in Bristol. Mm-hmm. And my understanding, it's hearsay, but I suspect you know knowing knowing the team there, it's true. Every single person that that they look to a point, they're looking for an ability to tell a story. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's whoever it is, and I think that's true of people in our business. I would say look at openings you know connect with people on linkedin on on uh, on twitter um look at post-production houses you know look at getting runners jobs there Uh, look at productions there there's always adverts you know there's always shout outs for for runners there's nothing wrong with being a runner it's one of the most important jobs you learn so much and it's the opportunity to talk to people yeah you know i remember when i was doing it you know what does this do on the camera? What are you mm. doing over there? How yeah. many sugars do you want in your coffee? You yeah. know, but you learn an, an enormous amount from doing it. And yeah, and yeah it's it's invaluable really and, and a great way to kind of make a you know a path into things. And yeah, I think these days it's it there's there's probably more opportunities in a way because there's so much more content being made. But I remember literally walking around Soho putting letters through doors and you know knocking on doors to try and you know meet with people but you can achieve so much more online now if you just are, are proactive enough with yeah. it i think you know? yeah no no i i agree and also i think because people are willing to help and they are mm. willing to support and, and my mm. very selfish attitude is i, I want to be nice to everybody because that runner may be in a position yep. to give me a job in a year's time yeah, yeah you, you know. never know who you might meet on your way back down who you know might yeah. kick you in the butt again if you know if you, <laughs> you know yeah. done, put only one sugar in their coffee you know? <laughs> <laughs> I put any sugar in my coffee yeah. i remember him <laughs> but, but also i think what that what that entry-level yeah. job does it it means that you understand mm. what a focus puller does, what a grip yeah. does, what, you know, so you know, and I don't think, I mean, I'm, I'm certainly living proof of this, but I don't think anyone needs to stress that they don't know what path they want to go on mm. by the time they leave uni, yeah. by the time they're 25, it just do what you do, what you love, mm. totally you know, right. and what you enjoy, uh, you know, and, you know our business is reasonably well paid yeah you know and uh, and there are some great opportunities so i'd say and and do it with a smile you know the biggest advice i can give is whenever anyone's applying for a job there's a hundred at least a hundred people who are just as qualified yeah but not all of them are going to remember everyone's name on set not yeah. all of them are going to be proactive i'm i'm we're all the same i had this conversation with with as you see so you see someone from the art department 
carrying a cardboard box and they're struggling, go over and help them. Yeah. 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 Well, that's what all of us should do. Well, it goes back to what you said earlier about, you know, the, the, the being team players and the family. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when I work with, with people, I want them to be on team and, yeah. and to, to go that little extra mile and to, you know, to laugh at my jokes and stuff, of course, but to be, you know, friendly and and also good with the clients as well, because if you're yeah. going to be a, a grumpy git and, you know, the, the client is trying to ask you something, that that's a no-no for me. And so, yeah, I think that you, you can have all the skills and qualifications, but if that attitude isn't mm -hmm. there, it, you know, is the wrong one, yeah. you know, it's, it's going to go against you, I think. It's the know? one thing that will always trip you up. Yeah, because you, you, you want to enjoy what you're doing and work with people that can be your friends and that you're yeah. going to have a good time with. And, you know, if, if someone's c combative or however you pronounce it, and, you know, yeah. not not moving in the same direction just makes everything, you know, so much harder. Yeah. Um, so that actually, it's almost like a plan. This that kind of leads me into my next question here. But um, you're almost was professional at like, this. Yeah, yeah. almost. Yeah, <laughs> start paying so, your money. <laughs> <laughs> so you you sort of mentioned it earlier, but what what was it like working with Chris Chibnall and and Jody and Mandip as well? And um, you know, people haven't they talked, haven't they, Paul, about oh, they have. Know, how yeah. great everyone was? And you know, I, I met Jody and Mandip at, at the weekend, and you, you know, it was I really met brief, and Mandip at the but, but they were lovely. Yeah. And and I, actually, I wanted to say, uh, I didn't say this to you yet, Paul, but Jody as well. But Mandip, every photo of Mandip was like she was super radiant. And it made me think of um, yeah. Barney on How I Met Your Mother. If you've ever seen that, there's an episode where that. they're like. Barney can't take a, a bad photo and they keep trying to Just trap him and like yeah, yeah trip yeah. him up and stuff or, or throw something at him and then they take the picture and he's he's always standing there with <laughs> his tie like this and you know that they can never get a bad photo of him and and that you know that's kind of what, what Mandip looked like so what was it like working with everyone and being that that team I don't think there's no weak there's not one genuinely not one single weak link in the team I mean I, I've I, I suppose I knew Chris and the exec team more than I knew the cast for season yeah. 11 and 12, obviously yeah. mm. VFX. So, you know, Chris is that, mm. you know, Chris is the, you know, is the brother who's very clever and got great vision and you want to please him all the time uh, because of his enthusiasm. Uh, he is a Liverpool uh, supporter. I, as a Crystal Palace supporter, I didn't hold that against him. Apart <laughs> Neither that, can be helped, I understand. He's a lovely, apart from that, he's a lovely guy. No, he, <laughs> he, he's, he's, he's passionate about Dr. I mean, the guy, the guy wrote Broadchurch, for goodness sake. I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, we're big fans of Chris Chibnall, that's for sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. But, but he is a lovely, he's a lovely guy. Uh, and mm. I, uh, my son, Obviously, this is pre-COVID, but I think season twelve came in. You know, to do some, uh, he he was doing some some work, and Chris would stop and come back, and he'd remember his name and go, "George, did, what did you think about this?" And what right. did you, you know? And that means a lot to me because mm -hmm. it's not it's not made up. It's yeah. gen it's genuine. Um, working with Matt, I mean, you know, Matt Matt Strevens is just one of the loveliest people, uh, you know, that you could wish wish to meet and has a similar sort of, we we always got on because we we got sort of similar backgrounds and we sort of meandered yeah. and, and, you know, played to our strengths. Nikki Wilson, a, a woman I really, really admire, you know, I mean, she, she gave me some good breaks and I've worked with her for, you know, for three years and, and you know, she's a, she's a tower of strength on the production. As far as the cast are concerned, you've you know with Jodie and Amanda, it is it is proper banter on set, you, you mm. know. But but the minute you've got a the minute you know, the minute the camera starts, then they're in. Then they're mm. into mm. what Pete? Why have I got to say this? And what you know? What uh, do you think it would be, be better if I to have that level of input is 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 fabulous, you mm. know? And to uh, and to be. Uh, I think what makes my life easier as a producer is when someone like Thadia comes onto set within 10 minutes because of the actions of the others, she feels like she's part of the team. Yeah. Yeah. That says a lot, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah. And, 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 I, and I really love that. And also, you know, I mean, I've got to say to you, you, you know, to the rest of the, to the rest of the gang that, that joined us, possibly in particular more than anyone else, John Bishop, because he's not an actor. Mm, mm. you know he's just a genuinely nice bloke who sort of who's aware of the fact that 
in the beginning, he's not an actor. He is mm. an actor now. Mm. Uh, mm. Y- 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 you know, but... but He seemed uh, to hit the ground running in this thing, didn't he? Do you know, I think. Yeah, on, on multiple times now on Who, uh, you know, Catherine Tate was coming in. Oh, yeah. Not sure about that. Proven completely wrong. Billy yeah. Piper, Lu- same thing. Yeah, yeah right Matt back. Lucas, oh, not, not sure. Proven wrong. And then John Bishop. And he he was wonderful, absolutely brilliant. And the fact yeah. that off camera, he he looked like he was he was living his best life doing it, you know, and yeah. which which I really liked as well. Um, yeah. So I think you know everyone who's ever been in the show has just been spot on, haven't they, Paul? There's mm. there's no poor casting or, or anything, you know, across the whole the whole time of it. No, I don't, I don't I don't think there has, and and I think it's about. Yeah. And I think it's getting that balance right with mm. with the relationship between the companions and 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 oh and I have to say I think yeah. so I was I was thinking John Sim was my was one of my favourite masters apart oh. from Kitty but yeah. watching Sasha oh. on the plane when he suddenly goes from nice guy oh. yeah. <laughs> to oh. turn that yeah. oh wow. Uh, and he starts doing these little ticks, doesn't he? Like, yes. oh, catch up, doctor, catch up, doctor. Yes. Yeah. And he's like, oh, yeah. that's my name. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he does all that stuff, jumping up and down his little feet. Yeah. Manic eye. yeah. Can I, I just, I'll, I'll just say on that point, actually. So, uh, spoilers get leaked quite a lot for you know a- a- anything and everything these days, but this this era of who has somehow oh it's been tight hasn't it been locked down but yeah. i love that and some people online they, do. they don't I'm, they I'm don't a, like it i and hate spoilers i, I think that's yeah. they're, they're wrong mm. to, uh, about imagine if you'd gone to watch avengers endgame for example and you knew what was or infinity war and you knew everyone was gonna you know yeah i hope, I hope you've seen it or <laughs> i won't spoil it <laughs> um <laughs> but you know i remember watching series 11 and literally not knowing what the next episode mm. was going to be about because there'd yeah. been no synopsis release and that and that feeling of like genuine kind of what's next mystery and wonder and and you know with flux it's, it's rare to see it in yeah TV it's these so days, hard these days particularly and, in genre tv you know however it's been done you know it's yeah kudos to to the whole team you know for keeping things secret it's it, it makes us such a rich and more rewarding experience i think yeah. to watch it yeah i no, i absolutely agree and uh, you know i liken it to if you buy a book you wouldn't just go right to the end and go well actually, no. now there's no point in me reading it if you want <laughs> yeah, exactly then, <laughs> then you then don't watch the show um but but i think certainly with a series like doctor who mm. it is such a high profile and i've never been on anything that that attracts i mean within 10 minutes of being out yeah. of the kitchen attracting so and certainly when you've got someone like johnny with you as passenger yeah, <laughs> yeah he, he's, a, he's a tall guy isn't he yeah he's a lovely fella yeah um, he was at the comic-con on sunday actually yeah i saw so 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 trying to keep that you know trying to keep that secret and i mean i'd have people wander up and go oh what's what's happening there i went oh no we're filming a commercial the, just <laughs> the targets yeah, <laughs> yeah. Play it right down here. Yeah. <laughs> it's not. Did Did you feel that spotlight of scrutiny shining upon you, Pete? Was it Was it always there? Was it something you had to quickly get used to? No, I I felt it all the time. I, I felt it all the time because I think it was it's our responsibility to make sure that cast and crew are safe. Yeah, that we keep that integrity of the show. That extra COVID layer that I said with regards to we are respectful to the fact that we're outside in an arena where not everyone is able to work, um, and also you know I mean it's a blessing and uh, and it's a curse. Mm, mm. John, Mandip, and Jody are brilliant when we're out <laughs> on location. I it's can imagine so they are actually. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just the, and they the, will go the, and talk to them. Yeah, just the camaraderie and, and the wit between yeah. between the three of them because the, the chemistry really comes through not, obviously on screen but also on the behind the scenes stuff mm. as well I was, I was i was home alone last week so one thing i treated myself to was watching all of flux i i, I literally watched it all in two days oh, three episodes followed by three episodes and yeah. it's brilliant because then you get a real feel for the whole story but it wasn't enough i needed more pete i needed more <laughs> so i dug into the um the extras on the on the on the disc and i'm watching john's video diary and 
you know, we're just getting a trying to get a sense of and, and that's the thing like we all do as fans at least i hope we all do it and I'm not, it's not just me being a bit weird but you know <laughs> you kind of you, you sort of just enjoy that the fact they're enjoying themselves yeah, you know yeah. it's almost like yeah you know, i wouldn't say you want to live that part although perhaps some people do you know which which is great you you would love to be part of that team you know whether it's the doctor actually the fiction of it flying through the tardis in the tardis through the universe and and some ways just actually being part of the the reality of it you know making yeah. a tv show you like like you said coming down it's almost like coming down to find yourself at home on Christmas morning, filled with all your best mates, and are we really getting paid for it? There's so many yeah. people would love to do that, and you get a real sense of it through, you know, not just show, not just the show, but the behind the scenes stuff as well. And, and actually, James Pardon, didn't he? When he was on our show, he was talking about that, and he said just snapping the little, um, you know, taking behind the scenes yeah. shots. You get you get Sasha and Jody going at it on before the camera, where, you know, when they're, when they're recording, and the air is filled with electricity, like you said, with a grand serpent you know with craig yeah. and, and that moment and then it all breaks off set and they're all chatty friendly yeah. sharing jokes having a bit of a laugh and all that we'd love to be part of that sort of thing. Thing. I, I, do, I do think it's do you remember but the mm. um uh doctor who confidential yeah i do I mean, yeah I, I, I would i wish they'd bring that back mm. uh, i you know i mean i would love to have had that for 11 12 13 so here's it so yeah. this is just a small example we're in Liverpool. We're on the steps of the cathedral. It's yeah. absolutely freezing. I've got <laughs> hand warmers, got <laughs> hand warmers in the front and back of both of my gloves, and in my yeah. shoes, and in my pockets. It's still not. You weren't taking any chances. I'm not taking any chances, <laughs> and I'm really feeling it's the cold. cold. <laughs> At my age, Paul, I shouldn't be out. Of those, <laughs> those no, <laughs> tell so me we, about it. So we've been out all day. We've got yeah. the catering truck there. We've got, you know, we've got, uh, uh, we've got the lovely. Uh, Nadia and John on the steps. We've got we've got Johnny standing at the bottom. Yeah. All of a sudden, I turn around and Mandip rocks up. I can't see her face <laughs> because it's hidden behind boxes and boxes and boxes of really nice cakes. Oh, um, she brought. She's not cake. working, but she's just turned up yeah. because her mates are out uh, are out mm. in the cold. So mm. she's going to come and and. I can't tell you what, how much that yeah. lifts the spirit yeah. of everyone. Uh, but, and they're all different types of cakes. I had at least three. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> at least three. <laughs> oh, that, that's, that's lovely. I must say, um, and I'm going to... Um, Excuse me. I'm going to rub it in again, Paul. But when uh, the pair of them did the talk on, on Saturday, <laughs> and it was only supposed to be Jodie initially, and, and then Mandip kind of gate crashed mm. it, they were just they were so good together and, and you know clearly the the friendship is is real mm -hmm. and um i think i think they referred to themselves as bff at one point um but it made me think I, i'd like to see them together obviously you know the, the time on the show is coming to an end but you know they, they've got to do something together again at, at some point because they just yeah the, that that friendship is is real but you know how they are together on screen and you know like you said they're they're having a bit of banter and they you know action and mm. you know they they go into it and um you know the the kind of inter interplay and the developments between the characters has been great hasn't it paul and loved it you know, the, yeah yeah the way it's, all, it's all gone well, i think we've seen well i mean we've seen jody i mean jody's an actor jody's a proper actor mm. you know we've seen her yeah. on, we've seen her at the theater we've seen her um, you know, in in heart wrenching, you know, scenes, you know, away from the doctor. I think Mandip has the. I mean, we've seen some brilliant stuff from her. I think mm. she's got the potential to be even better than we've seen than we've seen her. I, because I agree. I, yeah. You know, seen little clips of her. No, she's a she's a proper star. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I've loved them. Good. I mean, her, her and uh, Tosin as well, actually, from yeah. Suzy 11 and 12. It's almost like they sort of underplay things and it feels more, you know, so it's not, I mean, it's, it must be quite easy in, in Doctor Who, and we've seen it over the years, that there's, there can be a tendency towards melodrama and everything's yeah. very heightened. You yeah, know, everyone's the most important else, in the universe. And... When, you, when you have people like, uh, you know, like those characters, like, right, they're, uh, you know, like, like Ryan and uh, Graham, yeah, and Yaz, they feel more grounded because they're not over, over. They're not playing to the melodrama. You know, the actors aren't going for the heightened aspects of it. They, it's, it's, it's. For me, it feels 
that I can identify with these guys yeah. because they're, they, they, they feel more grounded. You know, they're yeah. relatable instantly. They are human beings who've been transported into an extraordinary situation. And rather than behaving like um, cosmic angels of, uh, of victory or something, they're still acting, they're still behaving like human people yeah. in an extraordinary situation, coping, still having a laugh, still making stupid jokes, still getting into trouble and, and generally having those emotions of, of anxiety and guilt and loss and sorrow and happiness. All those things have played out through these last three series for me in a much more realistic or more relatable way than they have been for a while. Yeah. That, for me, that's that's why I really connect with, with this latest run of stories, I think, because they are fantastical but they still feel very grounded through yeah. through the, the characters and yeah. the yeah. But I think that's I I think that's a combination of Chris knowing the mm. knowing his 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 cast mm. and him writing for them and then being able to de deliver those lines. I remember we were stood outside yeah. uh, and I was watching there's that scene I can't remember which episode now but it was that scene with Mandip and Jody in the police car and do you remember, do you remember Jody keeps glitching yes in and yes in between. Yeah, yeah. yeah yeah and she delivers that little monologue uh oh it's not uh, it's not like he even likes that right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. she yes. must have enjoyed that <laughs> she's i mean you know we you know the, the normal process is to go through a line read and yeah. then a rehearsal and then do it and then maybe yeah. another couple of takes or whatever every single time it made me chuckle I did mm. it quietly. I didn't want to be unprofessional. <laughs> it was like, it, it was yeah. like a, a little, you know, a little um, uh, monologue. It was just yeah, like, yeah. you can really do that. But I think it is that, you know, even, you know, with my background, you know, mm. you're in a stressful situation. We're going to see the funny side of things. And that's yeah, what absolutely. Keeps, yeah. keeps us together. So yeah. I think they, I think that was a combination of brilliant writing and, mm. and you know, brilliant acting. We, we've talked a bit about this on, online, haven't we, Paul? But it, it feels like, the, the whole three series, mm -hmm. um, you know, if, if you were to kind of watch it all back again, you know, the, the development is, is spread out across the whole it's thing. And, and it's it's obviously mm -hmm. been very well thought out and, and planned and, you know, is is more real, I think, yeah. you know, in, in many ways. And, you know, that that's kind of why I think, you know, for Paul and I, many others, you know, it's it's really clicked that, that it's there's such a strong kind of human aspect to it and you know we, we've said this before but we've never loved the show as much as, as we do now mm. and, and we've uh, always loved the show you know, yeah exactly yeah. it was like there's not 100 out of 100 like. just put that you know. out there you know? yeah <laughs> yeah exactly you know we, we were like because i love the melodrama as well yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. but but that love has kind of mm. you know broken that kind of you know that barrier it, it really has um, it, i mean for me it's, it's like doctor who constantly reinvents itself mm. you know it constantly shows us something new when we get a new team coming in new producers new writers new actors you know the dynamic is constantly changing for me that's what i like i'm not a fan of things that just stay still and yeah. stay the same and, and 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 are produced to a formula you know that never never changes doctor who I think does have some sort of formula to it but I think I suspect if you ever ask anybody to actually pin it down and say what it is it would be very difficult to say yeah. it's exactly this because you've probably got so many contradictions and things but yeah I'm kind of running off the mouth now it always no, happens no, no but you're right I think that's one of its benefits I mean I'm a big fan of TV I'm a big fan mm. of sci-fi and I will I mean you know watching some cracking shows even though you can, you know, I really enjoy a particular show, Lost in yeah. Space, is a good example. Oh, you know, yeah. I really love it. Mm. But then occasionally it sort of gets caught up in its own, mm. in its own mm. tail. And you think that is the beauty of, of the, the Doctor. It's, you know, it's okay. The Flux was six episodes, mm. but there's different little tales in amongst yeah, it and you've yes. got to have some form of resolution and also i think that we're a smart audience mm -hmm. and I, you don't need to you don't need to hit us over the head with a solution yes yes you absolutely. said exactly that yeah, yeah. Totally. you know what i mean yeah, yeah, absolutely. We said that before. There is a there is often a tendency to over explain everything. Yeah. Like, you know, we we are the sentient aliens from the galaxy of Romicrom, which is seven thousand light years yeah. from your puny galaxy. We yeah. are here on a motion of peace, but really we're going to wage war on you all. Ah. But, yeah. but, yeah, but you know that. what though? <laughs> I had my I had my movie watching Heartbroken. Uh yeah. I watched Highlander. I mean, you know. Oh, that's years. Years. Sean I mean, and, I mean, um, 
uh, what's his name? Yeah, it's Christoph Lambert, Sean Connery, yeah. uh, Russell Mulcahy was the director. It was mm. a brilliant film. It didn't explain every single thing because it mm. didn't need to. Mm. We waited for years and years, and then they brought out mm. Highlander Two. Oh no! Well, I won't <laughs> but it's, oh no! Well, in fact, they were uh, the reason they were immortal is because no, I don't need you, you don't to explain no. that. You no, don't need it all. No, yeah. no. set up you the know. mystery. You let the mystery, you know, feed a few breadcrumbs, let it kind yeah. of evolve, but then leave it unsolved. You know, leave yeah. people wanting more. That that that's my kind of take yeah. on. And, and we can fill in the gaps ourselves. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So um, I've I've got some questions from uh, Twitter users here. Um, Twitter users. Then... <laughs> Use Twitter. <laughs> Tweeters. Our Twitter Tweeters. community. Yeah. We're calling it a community now, Jeff. Remember, we talked about this, right? You didn't actually. No, I'm not sure what you want about that. No. <laughs> I'm full of cold. I'm on drugs now, honestly. I've been taking more aspirin than I've oh, ever had in my life. You seem, you seem normal to me. What? So <laughs> There's four of you guys. <laughs> so, you know, I have no idea which one I'm talking to. <laughs> Good looking one in the middle. Oh, no, that's me. That's you. <laughs> so uh, I've got a question here from um, at Ethan Posford. Uh, and we, Paul and I chatted to Ethan uh, for we the did. podcast. Lovely. The other week, uh, and I met him at Comic Con on um, Saturday. And I don't know if you've seen it, Paul, but I must say he his pitch that he got with Jody is absolutely brilliant. They've <laughs> they've got their Sonics, they and they're do. pointing they at the camera. Pose, and it's it such a well good done, picture. Man. Yeah, really good. So um, he said, Pete, were there any actors, characters, or locations that you wanted to feature uh, but couldn't because of COVID? Ooh. Oh, very good question from a proper fan there. I'd say no actors, no characters, locations, locations. Yeah, I would like to have gone abroad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think, when, you know, when we were in lockdown, I would like to, only because I think that, I mean, you know, the, the Punjab episode, you know, what, mm. what they managed to, you know, what yeah. they managed to shoot there, I thought was, I thought was, br I thought was brilliant. Um, I loved, uh, I love Liverpool. I have to say, I love, that was my first time in Liverpool, but was that, it? yeah, the, the cathedral, I mean, to go inside w was, was brilliant. I would love to have done some stuff inside, but uh, mm. You know, you've got to be careful about getting lots of people inside, mm. a, you know, a, a, an enclosed space that wasn't necessary in the end. Um, the church, the bombed out church was, ch I mean, it's beautiful. I mean, it's a mm. beautiful mm. location any, anyway. So, so I really like that. But no, I don't think there was any characters or cast that, 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 that we, we didn't have. So just right. maybe more of a slight frustration that you couldn't go, quite go to all these lovely places that you yeah, wanted to go town. abroad. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, that actually kind of ties in a bit with um, another question here, because obviously in series 11 and 12, you know, there was filming in South Africa and, mm. and places. Yeah. Um, so at Safe Space, Doctor Who asks, um, how did you film scenes set in Mexico, Nepal, uh, Morocco <laughs> and China when you couldn't go there? It's, it's a, I think it's down to... Uh, the brilliant art department who can, uh, you know, who can make anything mm. look real. Mm. Uh, you know, if, if we're going on a, we, we we were on an ocean liner in the middle of the, you know, I mean that was phenomenal. The Great Wall of China, yeah. uh, Nepal. Um, so it's about, uh, you know, we've got a great location team. You know, that's their job to go out and find. You say, okay, can you go out and find the Great Wall of China for us, please? <laughs> Uh, you know they'll go and sort source those. Then the art department, um, uh, and and then I think it's you know it's the the DOP and the camera team. Mm, mm. You know with the Great Wall of China, it was that. I mean that camp. You know that and brilliant. Uh, you know uh, uh, ideas from ours. How can we make the most of what we've mm, got? So, yeah. so that camera shot of coming up and pulling out on the and the paint the the writing on the yeah. Ground. Yeah, you, you know, and and you, you know, I I don't want to give anything away, Jeff. But you asked earlier on, you know, what VFX shots wouldn't mm. we necessarily have seen? Those might have been some. They might have been some of the in instances where you you know there might have been, you, you know. But but if you've got you know you've got uh you know our lovely our, our, our lovely sort of stranger high up in the Nepalese mountains. Oh, yeah. uh, 
uh, you, you know, with the with the banners fluttering and the yeah. campfire, and it's there. Yeah. It's all there. So that that's a question actually from Lee Wood, who's at Lee Wood seventy nine. Where where did in capitals where did they film the scenes <laughs> with Cami Ka Darwish? I'm not going to give that away. <laughs> oh, please. I'm not going to give that away, and I tell you for why. Go because on, yeah. I once spent a summer holiday uh, <laughs> with my son, who must have been about yeah. 12, 13 at the time, and I went online and mm. I found out where all the Doctor Who locations were, and we did a we did a road trip. So we did Bad Wolf Bay. You know, oh, we found yeah. that. You know, we found so where we found where Jackie where Jackie lived and so oh, we brilliant. did so we did all of that it it was it, it's it was reasonably close to home yeah yeah okay. so it, yeah. <laughs> I mean that, that speaks uh, ladies and gentlemen the words of a proper fan right there yeah anyone who's gonna do take a holiday and drag his family around Dr. E locations <laughs> yeah. that's a very fanish thing to do <laughs> one of my uh other questions yeah. was uh were you a fan of the show before working on it and I think, I th I think you've that answered that there <laughs> yeah, yeah big, big time. I mean I I did pitch I mean I was working with a, with a company mm. in Bristol at the time called 422 and when Russell first took on uh, Doctor Who, we, we pitched to be the VFX provider. Uh, we sadly didn't get it, but, mm. you know, the ups, every cloud, I got to meet yep. Russell T. Davis, yeah. who's you know, one of my, remains one of my television idols. So, mm. yeah, and just a lovely man mm, brilliant. as well. So, um, so uh, Matt Price, uh, who's at Matt Price 30, he says, what was to you the biggest challenge in creating the entirety of Flux? We, we sort of touched on that a little bit earlier, but what, what was what was the single biggest Ooh. channel and uh, yeah the bit that was rewarding to to get through that's a good one isn't it i think because i produced episode three five and six yeah with as and phil and then you've got nikki and uh the lovely sheena who produced the other episodes mm, and, the, and mm. the specials and then you've got the lovely uh, uh jamie uh you know jamie who directed uh Dark, yeah. i right. think it's about making us all talk to each other and go well what's your idea for that and what yeah. happens there and we're doing mm, this but mm. why are we doing that what happened in your episode so because we all just get on as well you know you can have those conversations uh, jamie's jamie, jamie stone is, is 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 such a collaborator as well mm. so you know i know he, he and as would you know disappear into a, into mm, a dark mm. corner with a couple of cups of coffee and they would be talking i know they'd be talking just about one thing yeah. you know and also you know i mean J jody and mandip and and um john bishop that you know they were all party to those other things so i think the biggest thing outside of covid was just to make sure that all of us working mm -hmm. on our own separate episodes created and, yeah. and nikki was over that nikki and matt were over that as well but but yeah that, I think that's it, it's all it all feels very coherent as, mm, as a piece does. but with you know flair that you know visual flair and style for, for, for the respective directors you know as, as well yeah. without kind of uh, you know sort of in deviating too much and making it you know completely different yeah uh, you know th there was some love lovely stuff uh, across it all um so there's there's not really a, a question because we we've kind of answered this but um robot of death whose username is graham ward 68 uh he he said, wanted to know about filming in the pandemic um and and just say to let you know he thought it was all a triumph uh, oh, you know the, the whole thing um and then let me scroll back down um and then there's a question from ian who's at ian underscore rg um and he, he said can you stress how much i really enjoyed the whole production um and and uh his question was what was your standout proudest moment on on flux finishing it <laughs> <laughs> <Brilliant>. <laughs> Finishing it and yeah. being proud of it, proud and, of it. and yeah. leaving some some good friends behind mm. that, mm. that you know we're still in touch with now, uh, you know tonight you know still that, so that's my proudest moment make, make, making friends and making it yeah sometimes that that's isn't it you do a good piece of work but it's it's what you take with it afterwards yeah. you know yeah um 
so uh, a couple more uh the devon uh whose username is at devon the he says uh were there any scenes that changed at the last moment in in episodes such as once upon time or, or the vanquishers i don't no i don't think so that anyone would notice i mean any minor you know i mean you know part of our job is that you know there will be little tiny little tiny changes yeah, yeah, um, you, know, you know when when someone would say well actually i wouldn't i wouldn't say i wouldn't say that line that way i my character would say it an, another way but as long as the sentence is basically the same yeah it's just the emphasis i mean different you know the three of us could be given a line of dialogue and all three of us would say it a different, mm. a different way um and also when you when you're there you know we get our we get our directors to to give us as you know it's endemic you know give, give me your camera plan so i know what I, I know what we're setting up for um once you're there on the set you know so the steamer for example what a, you know what a great little set that one mm. you know and and if you can if you've got your, your your camera and you're coming down and bish is sliding underneath the bunker actually why don't we just do it when you know and then you can think, yeah yeah mm. you know and think of another way to you know to get that to get that payoff and and yes you know fighting off fighting off the alleged waiter at the door oh, it's brilliant i mean yeah, it's such that's a, a great point. job you know you know so so little tiny things but but i think when you're filming generally and mm. particularly in a pandemic you've got to go into it with a with a proper yeah. plan because you know you've only got a set number of a set yeah. number of pages to shoot that day you can't overrun you know we know you know we know we need to finish dead on time because we've got to start again the following the following morning uh it's well, you know yeah were, were you worried at any time that it wouldn't get done it, it, was, was there any of those sort of dark moments I, I and i think this is probably not just specific to who mm. i'd say that's a producer's worst nightmare yeah. It, yeah. you know is yeah. not is not shooting out on on time um because that's our job to worry mm. about that so maybe that should be a, a fear at the in the back of our heads you know mm. if you if you if you're out on a street and you're out in a location and all of a sudden the heavens mm. open you know what are we going to do are, are we going to play this out um we can't move the tardis and the cast mm. and everything else yeah. to another location because we haven't got time that's a whole day do we should we call an end to the and, and i'm talking generic now yeah yeah call an end to the day do we introduce umbrellas and make that part of the story and have someone allude to it or do we wait five minutes do we, yeah you, you know so yeah that and that five minutes becomes 10 and another you know yeah yeah, yeah it's difficult isn't it but again yeah. it's like like we said earlier isn't it you know um creativity but thinking of solutions pu pulling people's talents together and resources to try and find a way through these that's things it. that's that's where the skill comes in and, and yeah and it pays off doesn't it yeah yeah i think so so there's a question from at cooper hillier here uh all the way from down Hi, under cooper. Sorry, what is your favorite that. episode slash serial of doctor who and, and how about we add to that with classic and Moon? oh oh let's <laughs> put him on the spot right there <laughs> uh, really well i would always pick something from the chris chibnall era yeah um i blimey i do you know what i'm not sure if i could pick one that i mean there are moments there are moments in a lot of them that i really like um uh, i did love the skithra i thought that was mm. you know, i love Nicholas Tesla I thought that was a yeah that that's was a great story yeah. um uh I love the story of Rosa Parks I think bringing that yeah. to a newer audience that was phenomenal um wow uh I think my favorite non Chibnall would be I, this is gonna this <laughs> the audience I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with two go I'm on. gonna go with uh the lodger because uh, because uh, i know james corden you know will divide the crowd but i thought him alongside matt smith yeah matt smith pretending to play football knowing that matt can really play <laughs> yeah <volleyball>, yeah. <laughs> uh, was, yeah was was brilliant 
my <clears throat> favourite of all time for a number of reasons has to be uh, Vincent. Mm. Oh yeah, I th I think it was. Um, I th thought it was just a beautiful story. I mean, Vincent Van Gogh was one of my favourite artists anyway. Yeah. Uh, and I've told this story before, but when my son, we went to one of the galleries in London, you can imagine when you're, you know, 11 or 12, mm -hmm. that's not your favorite place to go. Mm -hmm. He saw uh, the sunflowers. It was, it was, I mean, obviously, you know, there are a couple of versions of them, but so he saw mm -hmm. this person, the, the sunflowers, and he ran towards it and he stopped and he looked around. It's like expecting, is Vincent here? Is the doctor here? Really? Is that, you know, is the, uh. but, and I think introducing audiences and Doctor yeah. Who historically has done that. And I thought mm. it was just a beautiful story. That moment when the Doctor and, uh, and Amy take Vincent back to meet Bill Knight, Bill Knight gave that lovely speech. Yeah. It's just every time. Yeah. That, um, they, they show uh, older episodes on, I, I think it's the W channel or something on yeah. Sky. And a little while ago, we were flicking through on a, on a Sunday and that episode came on. And my wife's not really a big Who fan, but she said, oh, this, this is my favourite episode. Hmm. And um, it was just as I go to the museum at the end. And uh, we watched it. My son was next to me. And and I ended up having a bit of a tear from it. And, <laughs> and he said, "What what's the matter? You know, and he, he said, why are you sad? And, and I sort of tried to explain it all to him. And, and I think, you know, even at his age, he was probably just turned seven at the time yeah um you know he he kind of you know got the you know there was something quite kind of mm. you know special and quite and quite moving about it and i think yeah. you know that that episode and, and rosa as well um for example show uh, uh the the power that the show has yeah. uh, as well as the um you know what sci-fi can do because mm. it's it's you know not just about spaceships and robots and, and things you know this this is real people and and real emotion you know particularly yeah. noticeable in in chris's era um but in in fantastical and outlandish situations and, and in many ways a lot of that is just kind of window dressing for, yeah. for things mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. um and and telling a story about people and and things so yeah the, the vincent episode is it's a bit like Beautiful um you yeah. know the, the um when uh rose is on the bad wolf bay and and 10 comes to see her uh you know i i, I can't i can't watch that for you. <laughs> like, yeah and it, you know it's, it's just so so moving you know? yeah it's, it's it's incredible and i think for a show like doctor who to tackle mental health issues mm -hmm. as well for me that's really important i think that's why uh, the, who fans are so special because i think as a collective they we are very empathetic yeah I think of of of, of others and, mm. and accepting of others as well and i think that's been you know that's been a thread throughout the whole series of of mm. Doctor. Mm, yeah. you know it was it was the first the first female producer yeah of, you know that you you know uh warris was was the first you know, was was the first director of color. I mean, that yeah. is phenomenal and yeah. continues to mm. continues yeah, it does. to lead the yeah. way. You know, yeah. Gosh, yeah, when well. you think about it, Verity Lambert, what was she, twenty eight, twenty nine, I think, when she oh, was okay. producing Doctor Who, something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Un unheard of at, in at the sixties as well. You know, yeah. Just, yeah, yeah. Um, so no spoilers, but you you may not have <laughs> any anyway here. But how much do you know about the remaining? two episodes or are you no. going to be watching a fan watching no. as a fan no. like us none at all jeff and i tell you for why because i yeah. do want to watch it afresh Brilliant. because it's really i mean you know it's really when you're so when you're so close to a show like this and mm. you're watching it and i'm and i'm i'm watching something and i've read i've read the story lo lots of times yeah oh i'm standing just behind that pillar there <laughs> yeah you know, all this <laughs> stuff you can suspend i can suspend belief but only a little bit so yeah. I, I haven't I, I i haven't heard spoken to discussed anything i want to watch it i want to watch it fresh so you're going to be watching it like the rest of us with yeah. no yeah. idea of what's going to happen I, and we're going to jump in for joy and crying yeah. our tissues yeah. and all that sort of stuff yeah Oh, absolutely so sorry jeff and i would genuinely if there was anything i could tell you i would say i do know something <laughs> to, I mute, mute the recording yeah. yeah um 
yeah, we're really looking forward to the Sea Devils uh, episode. They, they yeah. were the sort of uh, classic, uh, you know, villain that I'd been waiting to see modernised. So in that little preview at the end of um, Eve of the Daleks, where it, it, it walked into focus, and I was like, oh, they've it done it. <laughs> yeah. it how how to make an old man feel like a kid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, we, we, we went on a Sea Devil's Bender after that, didn't we, and watched the, uh, the We did, yeah, episode. we did two yeah. very successful podcasts on the back of that five-second trailer. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Oh, we, we, were, we were that that hyped up about it, yeah. Excellent. We were. Um, Pete, uh, we sort of uh, mentioned this earlier but you, you got your start with your illustration work didn't you and, and so um is it something that you still do now and is there anywhere that we might have seen that that work that you've done um i haven't done any well yes so i obviously you know who took up, took up a lot of time and i was re really busy uh and uh, and so i do it for my own peace of mind so i've got uh I've, i do it can be split into two forms illustration which i've you know which has been you know on blue you know for shows like blue peter and all that yeah. sort of stuff but 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 way way back when and then my uh, and then my artwork which is primarily commissions um uh, you know when i've got time i was absolutely beside myself to uh, to be asked to create a piece of original artwork for jody as a as a gift Oh, fantastic! Uh, of Jody Mandip and John, uh, which I've done. I I did, you know, and there were special limited edition prints yeah. made for the exec team, um, and I did speak to Jody and and say, look, you know, if you don't mind, I'm gonna, I've got a couple back. I'm gonna put them up for sale at some point because I know Jody's a, a, a big supporter of particular charities, and I said I'd like to. You know, donate the profits to um, uh, a children's cancer charity, and she was obviously, uh, obviously very excited about that. So, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll be be showing those. I, I because it was a gift to her. I didn't. I wanted to give a little bit of time and 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 you know, not sort of rush that. But yeah, yeah. I'll be sharing those. Oh, brilliant. Well, let, let us know when you when you do that, and we can, yeah, yeah. We can share that out as well. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I've I've got one more uh, question that um, I'd sent you b before we chatted, and Paul, you might have some more as well, and maybe I will too. Um, but have you got any message for Doctor Who fans that you know anything you want to say about uh, you know them, the the show in general, you know your, your time on it? Yeah, I hope you. Uh, well, in fact, I do know you. Do, I know you appreciate the time and effort that we that we put into it, both behind and in front of the camera. Uh, because you continue to watch it and say lovely things about it it's a catalyst that brings a lot of people together um please continue to do that continue being to be uh nice to each other and continue to be supportive of each other the photographs that i've seen and and the comments that i've seen over the last couple of weeks from from comic cons is testimony to mm. that where you cosplay you know, yes. you know, paint paint your front room like the like the TARDIS. Embrace that. Em, embrace being different. Embrace being the same. Uh, and you know, keep keep supporting the show and keep keep watching it. Um, yeah, and and it is genuinely genuinely appreciated. You know, when we go out on location, you see the fans, you see Jody and, and and the team take time to go and talk to them. It does mean an awful lot. I have to say, it does mean an awful lot. We're not as a group. We're never going to agree with each other, but we are allowed to disagree with each other in a nice way. Yes, yeah, that's that's very important. Yeah, that's that's lovely. Yeah, um, I was I meant to say just now uh, when we asked what your favourite episode was, um, Paul, you've probably been asked this online as well. I like to just say flux because it's, it's one long episode as far as I'm nice. concerned. Nice. For the price of one there, uh, Jeff. Yeah. It's yeah. Nice. I wish I could have thought that. I wish I could have thought that. You can have I, that I one. Can't, That's Pete. Put it in back. I don't want a single one out, so I'll just, <laughs> just say the whole thing. Because, you know, it is. It's, it, it, all it, runs it is a cracker, one though, I have to yeah. say. Yeah. yeah. It really yeah. is. I've, I've got all blurry again, so I'm trying to get focused. But... Um, our listeners can't see this, but you've got a sign behind you there, Pete. I, mean, oh, I was there. going to ask that one. Oh, I've been sorry. Okay. At it for the last I'll, four I'll cut hours. that out. And you ask I'm going to wait for my moment and ask him about that sign behind his plant. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, it, it's uh, um, 
a lovely sign wow. from uh, that we were presented uh, when we when we left uh, from our Can lovely. We get a screen grab of that, Jeff. Uh, yeah, hold on. Got it. Thank you. you uh, yeah, it's it's. I mean, you know, it's 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 fa it's fabulous. It's a it's a lovely keepsake. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, I was I was so chuffed as you can imagine. You know. Yeah, as as a, as a fan as well. You know, which I imagine quite a lot of the the crew are as well. And you know, it's one of the the things. You know, the show is almost sixty years old now. Yeah. And, and I bet a lot of people who work on it were fans as well. And to get to, you know move it forward and you know usher it into a new you know era a new generation and things like that is is quite quite something really i yeah. think it's um incredible that it's it's still going and you know shows no sign of, of slowing down really well, that's credit to the bbc as well i think i have you know i, mean, I have to say there's been a lot of noise and and i i, I don't want to get serious but but you know it's been a lot of noise about the bbc mm. over recent re recent months and i think that you know it's such a brilliant it's such a brilliant platform to create programs for minority audiences you know for for, for across across the spectrum and mm -hmm. to continue to have faith when everything is always driven by by numbers to continue yeah. to have faith in in a show like doctor who like like hundreds of others so i think we should be extremely proud it's not just about it's not you know like some of the platforms it's about Cash, I understand that. Well, you know, we live yeah. in an economic world, but I think the BBC can be can be very proud uh, of you know what they what, what they what they what they give us and, mm -hmm. and you know, the, the toys that they let us play with. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think um, yeah. ho hopefully the right decisions will be will be made about things. You know, yeah, by the right people. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, I've gotten. I, I got had a, a question. Political there, Jeff, didn't I? Uh, no, I think it was. I think it was quite reasonable. Yeah, no, I think it was quite quite reasonable. Um, Paul, did you have anything else that, that you wanted to ask? I I, um, I did have one more question. But, well, I, I was going to ask Pete about the, uh, the 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 pull to open TARDIS sign behind him, but but you, you took that one away from me. I've, I've I've nabbed that one. That's the only one. I, that's the only one I wrote down on my little bit of paper asking about that sign. You know. Oh, I, I actually, there is there is one more actually. Yeah. I, do, I did write this one down, right? Because you said you were a big sci-fi, and we, we talked about Lost in Space briefly. But what are your favourite TV shows? <laughs> there you go. Wow. Okay. Well, I I mean I, I I like watching lots of different things. Mm. Um, I mean, I've just finished uh, Reacher, for example, which I which I really oh I'm I'm yet to start that one actually. Was, was it good? You know, I yeah. I really enjoyed the first Cruise film. Even though you know he wasn't quite right, perhaps. But this is Christopher different. Puma, this is so different. Yeah, this is more accurate, isn't it? Yeah, I, I like Christopher McQuarrie. Um, you know, as a, as a director, and he did a really good job with that first film. The second uh, Reacher movie, it it would probably have been a good thriller for, you know, someone. Yeah. But for crew, for crews, it was it wasn't as good as you know his his usual stuff. No, I think th I think the book. Um... I think the book is, is th this current series is very true to the book when the movies mm. aren't. So I would, so I would. It's on the killing um, floor, is it? Yeah. Is it that one? So the, literally the first Jack Reacher novel. Yeah. Brilliant. I'm really um, I, I, um, I loved, I, I did enjoy Lost in Space. The, the, the mm. you know, so I've watched, so I've watched all of that. There's a, there was a French language, um, series called Mission, uh, w which was, which was a, a mission to, uh, to very uh rich uh multi-billionaires uh it's it's sounding like it could be true uh <laughs> race, to, race to mars uh and and it's brilliant i mean it's okay. it's yeah so that well good. so well so well done um uh c comedies uh I, I i'm loving call my uh, i loved call my agent the french uh the french language series which is about a yeah. paris place casting agency and actors right. and you know and what goes on behind the scenes i think they're doing an english version um uh, but that, but but that was superb yeah i, I i'll watch anything and everything <laughs> all kinds <laughs> of things do, do you speak yeah. french you talk about french french language tv there uh, yeah <laughs> not we can read the subtitle is that what it is <laughs> 
<laughs> I, well, do you know what the funny thing was, Paul? I did. Yeah. I had to study Latin at school. How many Romans have I met since I left? Not one. Waste of time. Single one. <laughs> Absolute waste <Stolos>. of time. <laughs> oh dear. Brilliant. No, that's it. I'm out of questions now. I only had that, those two. That was it. <laughs> this is this has been brilliant, Pete. Thank you for taking brilliant. the time to, to talk with us. Uh, I think people will really enjoy listening to this, and uh, you know we'll we'll get quite a lot. You know, one of the things that we want to do with the podcast is, uh, you know, talk about the show, um, but talk with people involved with it, like yourself. But um, you know, to also give people. Um, you know information about you know getting into the industry or yeah. you know that that sort of thing so we you know trying to cover you know multiple things and um, a bit of inspiration, you know, we, a bit yeah of inspiration. and we've Absolutely. you know one of the things that um i talked with with the lady at comic con was you know she said i i like that you know you, you you're kind of going a bit deeper on things and we had a yeah. tweet the other day didn't we paul from a chap who said it's it's quite rare to get uh you know that sort of insight from people you know normally if you know it's just kind of you know fluff pr type stuff yeah. you know and uh so he said you know keep, keep up the good work so yeah it's it's you know i'll, well, I'll echo that actually i think that I, i'll echo that I, lo I love your chat with uh with ray and i think the you know that the, you know the interaction with you guys i think you know between between you two i think is really is really good as well I, oh, I, thanks, I, I would also add, if, okay. if anyone wants to follow us on linkedin or twitter i I'm, if i see any job opportunities coming up for entry mm -hmm. level I always repost them, so please feel free to dive in. Brilliant, that's really good. We'll share yeah. that. Brilliant. Yeah. Well, th thank you. So, um, uh, to our dear listeners, we hope you've enjoyed this podcast. Thank you for taking the time, as always, to uh, travel the Hooniverse with us. Oh, and massive thanks Very to good. Pete for for joining us tonight as well. Yeah, it's been brilliant. Right, really thanks. enjoyed this. Thank you, Pete. Thank you for joining us, taking time out of your busy evening to uh, sit on our little podcast, mate. It's been brilliant. Yeah. Really enjoy Much it. appreciated. Continue success both. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers, mate. That's fabulous. Brilliant.